four cars parked up and each car there's like two three other guys as well oh so they come yeah, fully to do exactly. some work i'm just deep in the situation I'm like, there's only three of us and ten of his boys what can we do here nothing this little kid comes out of the car he pulls out some huge sword out of his waist and the thing is when you're in those type of environments this is the type of things that pop off so it just goes this is the lifestyle this this is the roads here today gone tomorrow this is the reality of that lifestyle here today literally gone tomorrow What's going on guys, this video is sponsored by Louis. Some of you know him on Insta as Loads, one of the best Instagram names, let me tell you that. Guys, Louis has been building online businesses for the last five to 10 years and he has spent the last five years coaching others one-to-one -one on how to start businesses. Louis has got over 2,000 profitable testimonials and guys, let me be honest with you, I wouldn't let someone sponsor the show who I didn't vouch for, so trust me, it's legit. Literally, just go send him a DM on Instagram, it's at Loads, all you gotta do is say to him, I come from the Blue Tick Show, help me make some money. And I know most of these people out there scams and there's plenty of people out there offering you millions and millions of pounds and stuff like that. Louis is one of the 1% who actually do it properly. Legitly, you don't need nothing. All you literally need is a phone and Wi-Fi. Send him a message and leave the rest to him. Guys, and if you want to know why I'm sitting here pushing it so much, it's because realistically, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. And I know most people sit here and say this because they're getting some sort of commission for it and stuff like that, but I really ain't. I'm telling you as a good person, the host of the show, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. So go message Louis, say you come from the boutique show, just ask Louis for the business model, let him do the explaining and let him explain to you how he can help you. I'll see you soon. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show, the world's fastest growing show. I'm your host Mikey Mellon and opposite me today I've got Big Isa. How are you? I'm good man, thank you for having me on. I told you um, earlier that I went through a a phase of binging podcasts and your one was the one I was just <laughs> binging. I was just and then I pinged out. you a message. Yeah exactly, bro I was like yeah. Do you know what it was? I, was? I was looking at your account it was a stupid time, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I think I messaged you at like 2am. Oh. But listen guys you're probably wondering who he is. If you don't know who he is, many of our guests have come out the same area as him. They chose the hood life. He didn't. He chose the complete opposite route, but he had many opportunities to go down that route. Mm. So let's ha let's hear it. How are you? Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Happy to be here. Um, just ready to get into it, man. Well, look, at the end of the day, I've sat down and I've had a little chat with you. I understand a little bit about you. And I kept saying to you, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Let's keep it for the podcast. Yeah. So look, let's start off with the upbringing. I always like to throw it back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. Who are you mm -hmm. and where was you raised? Okay, so as you mentioned, born and raised in... The same area as many of the guests, Newham, East London, the trenches, well and truly, but we love it for where it is, you know. Um, in terms of my upbringing, um, to be honest, I was kind of put on a path where it was to be strict, like, it was very strict. So, grew up in a single mother home, um, and she was much more strict with me than my other siblings, simply because of the environment. Baby? Huh? Was you the baby of the family? I wasn't even the baby. I was like the second oldest. Okay, okay. But the thing is, compared to all of my other siblings, I was the one in which, you know, they were much more strict with, simply because of the environment that we're in. She didn't want me to go off the roads, as unfortunately many people do in um, in East and just London in general, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, single single mother home, um, very strict upbringing, to be honest with you. You're in school, you're doing your work, you're coming home, etc., etc. On top of that as well, I had, um, I'll say, the olders of the area who were doing what they were doing, activities. Of course, we'll, say, we'll say activities for now. Um, they were doing the activities, but they kind of protected me in a sense where, although I had, of course, opportunities to do what they're doing, they were always like, look, you're not doing what we're doing, simply because we don't want you to make the mistakes that we made. Okay. And why do you think they looked out for you? Because most of the olders use the youngers as... Exactly. They're dogs, runners, exactly. watchers. Why do you think they were Exa good to you? Exactly. That's, that's the thing. Um, we find that when it comes to that lifestyle, unfortunately, the youngers are kind of, we can say, groomed into yeah. it. Yeah, 100%. You know? They're groomed into it. They're used for, you know, doing little errands, running, used as runners, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But for me, it was different. They were like, I feel as though they kind of saw um, what my mum wanted for me. Um, and they kind of saw 
you know, should I say, they saw something within me that I could be more than that. I can be better than that, you know. So I was never used as a runner. I was, was you a good kid? I was a good kid. I was well behaved. Did you ever want to be a gangster? Nah. Because, you know, in that area, <laughs> everyone wants to be a gangster. That's the thing. That's the everyone, thing. They, they look up to them like they're role models. That's and it's, it's disgusting, but when you're when that's all you see, mm. that's all you want. Exactly. That's that's that's, that's the case. Um, fortunately for today as well, especially, like, I'm seeing a lot of kids doing this. Yeah, but, And that's why I do what I do, especially on social media. The message that I'm trying to push is that you don't have to do that. A lot of these kids these days, they come from good households. <laughs> both, you have both your parents. Your parents work. They make good money. You're making... You've got good pocket money. You don't have to do... You don't have to be this this guy. You don't have to try to force that lifestyle, you see. So, yeah, I was a good kid. I didn't want that for myself. But again, like we said, people are groomed into it. When they you were younger, what did you want to be? Ah, so many things, man. So many but everyone has a dream. What was your dream as a kid? Everyone wants to be a footballer. Everyone wants this. Everyone. What was yours? Or did you uh, never mine's be... a bit different. I've I've always been a bit creative. Okay. I've always been a bit creative. So I've wanted to be um, a graphic designer, okay. a game designer as well. I wanted to design games. None of those things happened. But it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I was a bit creative as a kid. There was a, there was a, actually a lot. I even wanted to be an author. I want oh, for real. I to, so I remember um, back in the day, I used to create like these little books. Like I literally used to get like ten pages fold it all up so it's like a book and then write like little comics draw comics in them bring them into school share amongst my friends so yeah there's a lot of things I wanted to be I, I was just a creative and I feel that maybe that's the reason as to why they kind of protect me from the lifestyle they saw that I wanted to be more um, and yeah that's, that's that what about your friends? friends back then? yeah well, back then your friends back then what, what was your <clears throat> circle? I don't did you see any of your friends get groomed into that lifestyle? Unfortunately, yeah. So there were a few guys that I was very close with um, back then, in which it's kind of sad to say, but we kind of went on different paths. Um, they started doing things that they shouldn't be doing, the activities, as we say. Obviously, I went down a different path, and you know, things happen as a as a result. Um, one of my closest friends, as, as a matter of fact, he actually passed away. Oh wow. Um, how did he pass? Recently. Um, so, this, I'll, I'll tell you the story. So, me and this brother of mine, we were literally like brothers, we were inseparable. Um, what happened was, you know, growing up, we were always together. Our f- sisters were friends, our mothers were friends, we were very close. People used to think that we were actually blood blood brothers. Oh, wow. And um, together in primary school, secondary school as well, we were together. And then when it got to like college, that's where people start having a bit more freedom. You know, they start going down the roads, doing different things. And um, we just kind of lost contact as well because I was on a different path and he went down this path and he moved out of the area as well that we were in. So what ended up happening is that we didn't, we weren't in contact for, for years, but we saw each other once in his area. And it was all love because the love never died between us, you know. But I, and I did say to him, bro, you should maybe just come back to the area, see, you know, the family, see my sister, my my mum, everyone misses you. He, and he literally said that I can't come back to the area because I've got issues with people in your ends. I can't come back to the area. Was you aware of any of this? I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware. But it's kind of sad because, again, the area used to be his area, you know. It's, yeah. it's where he grew up as well. But because he moved to a different area now, he couldn't come back. And it just goes to show this gang culture this lifestyle is it's deep it's deep man people can't come to the their home areas yeah. they can't see, come see their friends mm-hmm. half the time it's where their family lives as well exactly exactly that so I remember one day I was working and um, I was just scrolling through Instagram in the middle of work and I see one of the blog pages um, basically uploading an article saying so and so had been stabbed in the neck in um, in his area so I'm thinking, wait, like it, it can't be true. You know what I mean? And his name was there as well. Not his name. So they just put um, a picture of him. Not even a picture. So at the time, they only put that this person had been stabbed. They didn't really put the the name yet. Okay, so but you then, you weren't sure if it was him. At this I wasn't point. sure, but I'm thinking, yo, that that sounds a bit too close to home. Yeah. So I'm looking in the comments now, and people are putting R.I.P. So and so, as in their his name and yeah. his tag name. As you you know, when you're on the road, you have a tag name, right? 
So I'm thinking, yo, like, what's going on? Like, has is it? Is like, it definitely him? Is it him? So, you know, I'm just trying to find out more and more. And then there's an actual, now, a, another article. And this article has his name on it. So I'm like, yo, like, my brother's just died. Literally. Yeah, I thought, oh. Remember, I called my mom straight away. And so, as soon as I called my mom, I told her, yo, he, so-and-so's died. I just started bawling out, man. Just started, like, I literally just lost control. Yeah, because she obviously, she was with him as well. Do you know, so I just, yeah, it was sad. It was sad. But again, this is the reality of... Do you know what lifestyle. happened? Do you know that, obviously, knowing he's your best friend, you've obviously done a little bit of research yeah, into yeah, what yeah. happened. So, apparently, it, was, it wasn't even, like, an op. It wasn't an enemy. It was somebody that was within the same gang as him, basically, who who killed him over, I think, maybe, like, an, an argument or something. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, again, like, a lot of what I do is to show the youth that, yo, there is a different life that you can be living, you know? You don't have to do this. You don't have to jump on that life. There's somewhere, there's something better for you. And that's why, you know, a lot, with a lot of the content that I produce is more targeted towards the youth to show them that you, you, there are better alternatives to the roads. Do you know what it is as well? And I don't think this, this podcast mainly is to target the younger generation, of course. Mm. And I don't think the youth understand how dangerous it is anymore. Yeah. Because even me, I have a little brother. He's 16 years old. Mm. I got a phone call from my mum. It was two nights ago at midnight. She goes, Christopher's not home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? And you know what it is? When it's your... No matter how old we are, no matter how big we get, no matter, it's your little brother. Yeah, Even exactly. if we're 40 and he's 38, it's still your little brother. Mm -hmm. So I got straight in my car. She was like, he was at the cinema. It finished at 11. Cinema's five minutes from my house. I told him to get an Uber home. And it's now, at this point, when I was on the phone, so it was 12.45 and he's still not home. As you can imagine, I've seen the road life. I've interviewed everybody. Mm. Criminals, not criminals, gangsters, crazy people. And straight away in your head, you think something's happened to my little brother. Mm. I've driven home, searching, literally flying round roads, trying to find out where my little brother is. About 20 minutes later, he turns up home in an Uber. I lost my shit at him. Yeah, of course. I started screaming. His phone died, yeah? Mm. To me, back in maybe our generation, when your phone hits 20%, you give your mum's number to your boy, you phone up your, off your boy's phone, your mum, just to let you know this is yes, sir. Jack's number, mm -hmm. call me if you need me, my phone's going to die. Mm. But the younger gen, they don't think like that no more. Mm. And it's mad because I was screaming at him, I was trying to make him understand, like, forget about your life. Let's say you want to be a big hard man, that's fine, but your mum's worrying, exactly. your brother's worrying, your sisters are worrying. Mm -hmm. By the time, that, the, the whole family's woken up. Everyone's mm -hmm. trying to work out mm -hmm. where his little boy is, but mm -hmm. to them it's just, oh, my phone died. <clears throat> Exactly, exactly. And the thing is, a lot of people on the roads need to understand that, especially just the kids. The kids need to understand, if you're trying to live this life, it's not you alone dealing with the ops. It's not you that alone that are dealing with the feds. When the feds come to the house to do a sweep, trying to find whatever they're trying to find, it's your parents and your little siblings that are traumatised by the feds. You understand? Yes, when you have ops, there's been numerous occasions where people have been got they've not been involved they might just be you know an affiliate they might be a friend or even just a sibling of this person that's on road but they will still get done just because they're associated with this person okay, you understand i've been this i can even tell you an example so one day me and the guys will in the blocks we shouldn't have been in the blocks like low lives but you know these guys the ups are no good okay so i'm chilling with them in the blocks they're doing whatever they do at this point i was of course you know muslim as well so i was more thinking to myself should i really be here should i just be at the mosque i'd be doing something more productive but i thought you know what these guys are my guys let me just chill with them you understand for some reason we went round the block we don't usually do this but we went round the block here yeah? and we see these guys that we've never seen before in the area right and they've obviously seen us so now one of them we'll call him cedric He's the, the <laughs> he's the he's the leader. We'll call him Cedric. Cedric, he went he went to go question one of my guys about another guy that he's associated with. So my guy obviously got a bit, you know, like what's he talking about? Like why is he trying to question me on so and so, right? So he's like, don't worry about it. Da -da 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 -da. And long story short, they start mouthing off to each other. This guy is with. Numerous other guys, like four cars parked up. Cedric is Cedric. 
four cars parked up and each car there's like two three other guys as well oh so they come yeah, fully to do exactly, some work exactly so I'm looking I'm just deep in the situation I'm like there's only three of us me my guy and another guy that we're with there's only three of us and the Cedric and ten of his boys what can we do here nothing you it's a numbers me? game you, you got no chance there's one guy to the right of me I call him the Drake guy he looked he looked like Drake <laughs> <laughs> I call him the Drake guy so I was like okay if something pops off I'm gonna hit Drake first and then I'm just gonna take it and we're gonna go these guys are muffing off to each other Mikey this little kid comes out of the car the kid was wallahi the kid was like four foot something sh- small he pulls out a Excalibur he pulls out some huge sword out of his waist ready to do us. I was like, yo, like, this is crazy. Yeah, for real. So, I'm, so everyone's just deep in the situation now. I'm like, okay, we got to go. We're not staying here. Yeah. And the thing is, when you're in those type of environments, this is the type of things that pop off. You understand? So if you really want to change, you really want to change your environment, first and foremost. Yeah. Told the boys, I told my guy, yo, it's not worth it. Let's go. Yeah. Guess what happened to Cedric though? To Cedric. To yeah. Cedric. We found out, I think weeks later, Cedric got killed in his own end. Wow. So, it just goes, this is the lifestyle. This this is the roads. Here today, gone tomorrow. This is the reality of that lifestyle. Here today, literally Bro, I, gone I watched a clip on on TikTok, believe it or not, about them knives, the swords, yeah? Mm. They call them zombie zombie killers. ZK, or, ZK, ZK, zombie yeah, killer, yeah, zombie killers. Yeah, zombie killers. Did you know that you can order one online? Yeah, I'm just saying me advertising to order one, but as long as it doesn't say wording on it, mm. it's legal. What? Bro, I watched the video. How fucked is that? Yeah, seriously. So you can go on go on your phone, tap type in whatever you want a big sword or whatever, yeah. As long as it says like it's a what's a souvenir, mm. it's legal. That's insane. And that's why Bro, this country's find- finished. That's why you find a lot of these kids running around with these big swords. And all jokes aside, it's your life's done. Mm-hmm. Your life is it, it, it's one stab wound with that. They're not. Exactly. They're not little kitchen knives. They're not. Listen, I'm not advertising any knives out there in the mm-hmm. world because mm-hmm. I disagree with that. Mm-hmm. But you know the good old days. You know, like when I used to go to school. When you probably used to go to school. Something goes off. You have a punch up. Yeah. It's what's going oh, my Mikey and Jack's having a fight after school. They're having a fight. Yeah. Never worried about knives. Mm. Never worried about people pulling out guns and shooting you. Mm. But now it's now it's bad. Exactly. It's, it's, it's bad. bad. It's bad. And, and that that situation you was in <laughs> was nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me. It's just again, we were associated with somebody that was up to no good, and as a result, we were in a situation where we could have lost lost our lives. And that's just the reality reality of. And how did you get out of there? Literally. The guy pulled out his sword. The sword was literally half the size of him. I was like, yo, this isn't worth it. It's either we die right now. All he has to do is literally, it's and fun. that's it. And for what? Just because we started mouthing off to each other. It's, I feel as though a lot of people on the roads do have a bit, that pride though, you know? It's all about the ego. It was all about the ego. So I just said to my guy, yo, we're gone. We're gone. We're not, we're not doing this. I told the man, yo, you man, stay there. We're going. And then that's it. We... We, we went, man. He didn't say anything. I think they they said some little comments afterwards that kind of burned, but we were like, yeah, yeah, don't don't worry about that. I think it's not worth it. your ego's not worth it, mm. especially if it's someone who's not even there. Exactly, exactly. Like, the guy that they were after wasn't even with us. <laughs> That's the mad part. <laughs> you understand? We're just associated with him, so it's it's it's, it's crazy. And again, you know, all of this, seeing all of this and being in these situations is kind of what led me to Islam as well. Um, just realizing that you know life is short, death doesn't discriminate. I think we're programmed to believe that death is for the old man who has a grey beard and six, seven grandkids. But when and truly, you can be fifteen, sixteen, you can lose your life. What age did you revert? Seventeen, eighteen, seventeen, eighteen. What was the turning point for you? So again, it was just realizing that life is short, um, death doesn't discriminate. There were a chain of events that led up to me taking my shahada and just looking for my purpose in life um i remember before actually reverting to islam i told one of my brothers that 
I'm going to be a bachelor, man. I'm going to be a bachelor. I'm going to live the party life. I'm going to have a roster, did, 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 all of this crazy stuff. Had a little, um, had a little bit of that. Didn't like it. Just, I was like, you know, uh, this, this doesn't feel anything. I feel empty, you know? So the chain of events that led up to it, me taking my shahada was one when one of my friends passed away, my childhood friends passed away. She she passed away from some sort of organ failure. Oh, sorry to hear. And um, it just kind of hit me like, I was like, yo, like she was so young. Yeah. So young, 17, 18 at the time. Like, how, you know, like, again, we have the mentality that death is for the old man, not for the 18 year old, you know? And then my uncle randomly collapsed. So he went out one day. My auntie got a call that my uncle randomly collapsed and he's in the hospital. His body was shutting down. My mum told me and my sister that, yo, we're going to go see your uncle. He's probably not going to make it. So then I'm like, yo, we went to go see him and I couldn't even recognise him. His body had started breaking down so much that we couldn't recognise him. We tried speaking to him. He's conscious, but he's not able to communicate back to us. I remember the nurses came in. They started, you know, dressing yeah. his wounds. And I don't know what happened to him, but they started dressing him up and he was like kind of like wincing from the pain. And the fact is that my friend just passed away before this. And then my uncle, and there's a big contrast between them. My uncle was old, 50s, 60s. My, my friend was young. So death can come to anyone, you know? Literally anyone. And then, um, like time after that, I started really deep in life. Though. That's when I really started deep in life after my uncle. Um, and then after that, I nearly got stabbed due to mistaken identity. And this happens more than we know in the area that we live in London. Literally, I was walking to the bus stop. I saw How old was you? This is when I was around 17, same age, 17, okay. 18, yeah. Walking to the bus stop and I see one of my guys coming the opposite direction. This guy is known to be kind of like the joker, like the the guy that's always laughing, giving Clock playing time. pranks. Yeah, him. But I see him just frightened, scared. I've never seen that expression on his face before. So I'm, I'm like to him, yo, you're good. He's like, yo, move. Started dipping. I was like, bro, like, what's going on? But anyways, walk to the bus stop now. Out of nowhere, a guy comes in front of me. Yo, I've got you now. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. What are you saying? I was like, yo, like, what's going on? He goes, what, you don't think I'll be able to find you? I've got you now. Pulls out a little flicky. I'm like, bro, like, I'm thinking in my head, what is going on right now? Like, is this guy actually about to kill me for no reason? Yeah, I've got no idea who this guy is. I remember looking to my left, there was like uh, a grand, like an old woman, granny. She was <laughs> literally shaking. He's like, bro, I should dip you right now. Duh, 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 duh. Just giving me so much talk. I'm like, bro, I don't know who you are. Like, what is going on? I was trying to even like grab his wrists. But he kept on moving back, he, you know? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, his friend comes around the corner. I'm thinking, at the time I was thinking, yo, like, is this friend about to get involved? Am I done for? His friend was like, what's your name? I told him my name. He's like, yo, yo, wrong guy, wrong guy, let's go. So I'm looking at the guy, the guy's looking, he's like, oh, sorry, bro. Then he went to give me a handshake. But I'm like, bro, you're about to kill me. You don't even know my name. Yeah, for real. You know? I was meant to be going out. The granny came and, you know, she she spoke to me. She could see that I was visibly shaken up. That's the first time I've been in a situation like that. This is before the Cedric situation, by the way. So, went home. I didn't even go out. Went home. I was just there. I was like, yo, like, if I had died like that, would I have been happy with the way I lived? Like, I told myself before I do pass away, I want to retire my parents. I want to move them out of the area. There's so many things I wanted to do before I die. And I wouldn't have been able to do any of that if I'd passed away at that moment. Yeah. 
and what about the way I lived as well? Am I because I, I still believed in the higher power at that point, but I, I just didn't know where to place myself. If I passed away, where would, where would I have gone? You know, all of these questions were going through my head. I'm like, yo, I need to find out the reasons to why we're here. Started doing my research, long story short, took my shahada, came to Islam, and alhamdulillah, you know, I've got the mindset of, again, we can be here today, gone tomorrow, but at least, like, I know I'm living a lifestyle in which I'm happy with. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, it's accepted and, you know, I can go to, to heaven, you know. Um, and Islam as well was just, it promotes discipline, it promotes being a good person, it promotes just, you know, just, just goodness, you know, and alhamdulillah, I'm just happy that, you know, it took those situations for me to be guided and be where I am today. Are any of your other family members Muslim? I literally just found out two days ago that one of my cousins, he, he came to Islam. And the rest of the family, are they? Not they, there yet, not there yet. Do they follow anything? They're, they're like Christians, not really and practicing. How but did the family take it when you said you was Muslim? Boy, it was mad. It was mad, obviously. Um, so leading up to me becoming, actually taking my shahada, I remember, the, I remember the evening. Um, did you tell I, the family you was looking into it or you nah, just nah, kept nah, it nah. quiet? So what I did was, I, first of all, was after that situation, after I did my, my research, I went to go tell one of my boys. I was like, yo, I'm ready to take my shahada out of nowhere. He's like, yo, like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bro, don't ask questions. I'm going to take my shahada. But before I do so, let me just come to a mosque and let me see how you guys pray. So this brother was Muslim, yeah? Yeah, he was okay. Muslim. Um, So he's like, yeah, come to the mosque. And these times it was Ramadan. So he's like, yeah, come to the mosque. Um, for Isha prayer, and um, which is the last prayer, and yeah, come see how we pray. But these times Isha was at like ten o'clock late. Yeah. So I'm telling my mom, yo, I'm going out. I'm gonna go buy milk. She's like, what? Why are you buying milk at nine, ten o'clock? I'm like, we need milk for tomorrow morning. I'm gonna come back. She's there, ask me hella questions. She was so suspicious. Usually my mom lets me go out, but for that not that night, I don't know. Like she was just so suspicious. Anyways, end up going to the mosque and I just saw the prayer and I was like, yo, this is beautiful. I think, yeah, I'm ready to take my shahada. Told my mum, she wasn't having it. Wasn't having it at all. Of course, my mum is a very, very good woman, but when it when it came to religion and Dean, she was she was like, yo, nope, we're Christian. But I was like, you know, this is for me. This is what I want to do. So she told my dad. My dad came. He tried to speak to me, but I said, dad, no, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And then went took my shahada, came back home, and it was just chaos. <laughs> got kicked out a couple of times. I had to. For real? Was that bad? Yeah, got kicked out a couple of times. I had to sleep at my, my friend's house. Um, Had to sleep in like mustard sometimes. Like, yeah, man, East London Mosque. That, that's, that's my home. So I'm, like, that's oh, for real? Home. For real? Was yeah, that bad at home? Yeah, it was bad, man. Like, after college, I wouldn't go back home. I would just go to the mosque and I would just like just chilling in the mosque for like the whole day. Do you know what it is though? And I don't blame your mum and dad. Mm. I don't, because if you hear me out in this, I spoke to someone, I'm not going to say who, but I spoke to someone three days ago about becoming Muslim. Mm. And people are so, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't know nothing about the religion. Yeah. I was speaking to her and she was like, do you not believe in Jesus? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And she's yeah. like, what about heaven and hell? Like, People are so they don't know. They, they don't just know. I'm not even being funny, but what the media put out there, when you think mm. Muslim, you think terrorist. Yeah, exactly. Genuinely, that exactly. is what that is what the media portrays. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So I can't blame your mum and dad because because that is <clears throat> when you look at the media, when you look at everything that's going on in the world, mm. but you they think Muslim, it's what the they think, oh terrorist, oh my god, oh my god. When in reality it's the most beautiful religion in the world. Indeed. It's listen, every religion is beautiful. I don't knock that's, none of them. Yes, sir. But to me, I'm a Muslim, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and in my eyes, it's the most beautiful. Mm. And but to other people, like we don't dis no religions. You'll never ever disrespect another religion. I never know that, that straight never away. That. Never that. But they, they people. It, uh, listen, I don't know. It's, yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, again, I don't blame them. Um, the but they need, really kicked you out for yeah, real. They kicked me out, man. I got kicked <laughs> out. I had to sleep over my boy's house for a couple, couple times. Sometimes I'd wear, you know, the fob yeah. and uh, the kufi. Like, that was a problem. Yeah, they'll bug out. A um, couple of times I had like books, like my, I'd get like books as gifts and I'd have like a koofie or a, um, a phobe. A 
come home, gone. Yeah, yeah man, it was crazy. It was crazy, but I think the turning point. This is when it got kind of deep. So, I've got family in France. Yeah. Okay. My dad was like, "Yo, you're going France for." for <laughs> <laughs> my dad was like, "Yo, you're going to France for, and you're going to be staying there for a bit." I'm like, "You know, I've got my cousin there. It's cool." But I realized that it was to actually kind of make me forget about Islam because. It's my auntie's house, um, and she was really Christian, and she's not gonna obviously take me praying and stuff like that, you know. Got to France now, if, bro. It felt like a bird, man. I was there for time. I can't even remember how long I was there for. I was there for so long. Came back speaking French, easily. Like my French is, was decent then, but after I came back from that, that was, you was good. <laughs> I was good. Um, so yeah. Um, was you praying at your auntie's house? Nah, I couldn't do anything, man. Nothing. Nothing. Was man. you still Muslim? Did, was I, you still? I was. I was so. To me, I was still Muslim. Um, and again, this isn't to say that, you know, my family are bad people, they're the best of people. It's just that, again, they, they weren't informed. Yeah, that's um, informed, yeah. So, yeah, my auntie, I couldn't pray in her home. The thing is, they tried to make me forget about um, Islam, but I had a couple of Moroccan friends, a couple of Algerian yeah, friends. Cool. That, yeah, it was, I was talking to them. They were like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. You know, but one day what happened was we went to a church. Yeah, my auntie's like, yo, we're going to church today. I'm like, I'm not really trying to yeah we're going to church today get to the church now I'm just there obviously again I'm not going to disrespect anybody I'm not going to disrespect my elders my aunties all their religion so I'm there I'm like okay cool I'm just going to sit down and just you know what I mean and when it's over we'll go back home the service finished now and my auntie said come she put me in a room the room was like literally the width was this table the size of this table and it was just kind of long like a little hallway yeah and then there was like a priest in front of me, a female priest, and she had like two wham bodyguards behind her. What? So I'm like, what is going on here? It was a dark room as well. So the priest is talking to my auntie in French. Again, to them, they're thinking that my French isn't that good. They're not, he's not going to understand. But I was picking words up. Yeah. And obviously being there for so long, I started to understand French quite a bit more. The priest started saying that I'm possessed by the devil. There's a devil within me. It's, it's the devil duh, 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 duh. and I was looking at my auntie I was like yo like you can't be real right now this is crazy so my auntie's looking at me I'm looking at my auntie <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stare down <laughs> literally I'm like yo like this is scary bro <laughs> and it, I don't know the the whole environment the setting was just frightening you know Alhamdulillah, nothing happened. I thought they were going to do some some next stuff. <laughs> some like, exorcism. Yeah, thing, bro. bro. But Alhamdulillah, nothing happened. Went home, but I told my mom straight away. I was like, mom, like, I'm ready to come home. She was like, yeah, yeah, cool. Get the train back. Said goodbye to my auntie. But my auntie, before I left, she was like, look, like, you can do what you want to do, but I prefer if you weren't Muslim. But I said, I'm sorry, auntie, but I'm staying firm. You know, I'm going to be Muslim. Went home, told my mom about this whole situation. And how scared I was. I had to kind of like blag it at me. Mm. Mom, like, this happened. And she just felt bad for me. Told my dad, like, yo, this is what's going on. Da, 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 da. And my dad was like, ah, all right, cool, let's just leave him. Let him just do what he wants. And you know what? All of that happening, I just saw it as Allah testing me. Because we know that Allah tests those that he loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, um, those who, all those who believe seek help through patience of prayer rarely are lost with the patient I stayed patient when you are going through hard times you just need to stick through it stay patient stay resilient and that's exactly what I did you know came out on top and I feel as though my family especially they could see that being Muslim just made me become a better person you know I didn't go off the rails when I could have many situations where I could have turned to the roads, roads I didn't there were times where I was dead broke and I didn't turn to anything bad, to, I turned to anything evil, stayed firm, stayed resilient. I told my mum, this is what Islam preaches. Islam preaches me to stay firm on my religion and to stay patient in terms of hardship. And I feel as though, you know, she's just started to accept it. And even now she tells me, look, I can see that Islam has made you a much better person compared to a lot of guys in my area who were going off the rails, doing madnesses, you know? So... I don't even know what I, I don't know where I'd be or who I'd be if I didn't have my religion and I owe my religion to a lot of the, the success I have now everything that I've achieved everything that I've accomplished is definitely down to the prayers I've been doing the you know the staying away from the sins 
staying firm in times of hardship. It, I, will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I owe it all to my religion, man. You know. Do you know what it is as well? And I think we could sit here and talk about religion all day as well mm. because it's such a, like I say, it's a beautiful religion. I only reverted two years ago and from then my life changed. Yeah. It did. And I think mm. only other Muslims slash reverts or people who take religion proper mm-hmm. understand it mm. because it, it does make you a better person. Mm-hmm. And you know, when I first become Muslim, my mum was a bit... She even said, oh, he's just going through a phase. <laughs> it's just a phase. He's oh. got loads of Muslim brothers. It's a phase he's going through. And then when she saw like throughout Ramadan, I was fasting. She was like, hmm, okay. Like he's taking it serious. But then as time's gone on now, we're like two, three years in, mm-hmm. she says to me like, I, res- I respect that you respect the religion. Mm-hmm. She goes, I'm glad you've not become a Muslim and just said, I'm a Muslim and carried on doing all the crazy stuff. Yeah. As long as you're respecting, I think your mom probably had the same... To start, it was, oh, yeah, he's doing mad, crazy stuff. But then as she sees you're respecting it and you was better in yourself, she was like, okay, whatever he's doing, I don't mind, as long mm. as he's improving my son. Exactly. I think exactly. that's what helps. Exactly. You said you've achieved a lot. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about your achievements. Oh, uh, man. Um, I, feel, I feel as though a big achievement, because, again, I told you I was a very creative person growing up. And I've always wanted to, you know create content and stuff like that um so building the platform that i've built to me is one of my greatest achievements because i've been able to we we see in this day and age there's a lot of content out there a lot of people creating content it's not really good content it's not really pushing out a good message my biggest achievement is that i've been able to cultivate the the platform that that i've um you know that i have right now and people are literally telling me in my dms even coming up to me in public saying, look, you've changed my life. That's that's crazy. Through the content that I've created. And that's that my mission is literally to show the youth and people you don't have to be living this life of degeneracy. You don't have to be living this life of the roads. There's a better side. There's religion. There's discipline. There's building a business for your family. To retire your family. To retire your parents. There's, you know friendship brotherhood all of these things is what i push through my content and people seeing that and saying that i've changed their life through that is one of my biggest accomplishments how does it make you feel when you're in public and someone comes up and says you've changed my life genuinely how does that make you feel it's mad it's mad it's mad i remember once a little kid the kid looked like he was like 14 15 he was like isa he came up to me in the mosque um and this was after a lecture with a very very famous um very very famous teacher so I didn't expect anybody to come up to me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's teachers in front of us. I'm coming here to learn as well. You know, he's very famous. After that, a whole bunch of kids just came up to me saying, yo, like your content is inspiring. You've changed my life. This, that, that, this. I'm like, yo, like this is the the impact that we can have on the youth, you know? Yeah, it's mad. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's a crazy feeling, man. Um, it just, I feel as though it's just my calling and the fact that I've been able to do that. Even if it's literally, if, even if one kid told me that, through you, I'm now practicing, and or I'm going gym or something like that. Then that's that's my mission done. You know, that's what I say about my podcast. As much as I have ex criminals on, one thing all my podcasts have in common: everyone changes their life around. Exactly. So as much as people say, "Why do you do criminals?" Da, 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 the moral of the story is they was a criminal. They've exactly. turned their life They've around. Their life around and what them. I say in my podcast, even if one person watches it and just says, "Yo, this helped me," mm-hmm. I've done my job. Yep. Uh, like same that's the same feeling you get I've done it so, forget about the views forget about the, the money forget about all mm, of it mm-hmm. you've changed one person's life sweet I can I can sleep good tonight exactly exactly that exactly that there, there was another thing you said you turned around and you said you was dead broke at points yes and it takes a lot for a grown man to tell people he was dead broke because everyone never wants to admit their hardship mm-hmm, mm-hmm. talk to us a little bit about the times when you was really down in the dumps so there's one time in specific that I, I even um, uploaded a, a video to this um, on YouTube, but one time in specific where this is what really as well helped him build a relationship with Allah and my religion. So this was actually after college. This is where I was still going through with my family. After college, I didn't want to go uni. I wanted to start working, but the job that I wanted was a very, very high up job where I wanted to work in finance, okay. you know? And at the time, I didn't have a job as well. I don't know why it was just—it was a struggle to get jobs at, at that period as well. Because I'm a kid, I just came out of sixth form. It's no experience, you know. So I had no money. Literally, I had no money um, coming in. 
um, bank account was on zero. And it was just tough. It was just really, really hard. So what I would do, it was like, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to build a routine. I'm going to wake up every morning early, pray a, a prayer called Tahajud. Tahajud is the prayer just before Fajr. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it said that a supplication, a prayer made to Allah at the time of Tahajud is like an arrow that doesn't miss its target. It's going to get accepted. Mm-hmm. Every single day I woke up and prayed that Tahajud prayer. Asking a lot, okay, I need a job. My mom as well, but at the time again, she's a single mother. She needs money coming in. She needs help. So it was wasn't gonna be it was wasn't gonna be anyone else but me to do that for her and to help her. Woke up, prayed the Sahaja prayer, went and prayed all the other prayers in the mosque. What I'll do is I'll take my laptop, go and sit in the costa, just apply, apply for jobs, apply for jobs, apply for jobs. Hoping that something will come through. And this was the routine for at least two, three weeks. Every day. Every single day. With the Hadrud, go to the Costa. The Costa was like um, a five minute walk to the nearest mosque. So I'd be in the Costa doing applications. When it's the time for the next prayer, go to the mosque, come back. Applications, applications, applications. And I, would just, I was just banging it out. Nothing was coming my way for time. But I was like, you know what? Let me not lose hope kept on going kept on going at this point it was getting peak like the bank account was running low i was like yo i just need i need something to work out of nowhere i get a um response for a firm a financial technology firm they're like look we're looking for apprentices let's do an interview i had to do like three interviews for that that um that job it was tough as well they're asking some high level stuff i was like yo i'm not getting this bro ended up getting it though I was, I remember this tearing up, like, yo, like, the patience, the prayers, everything paid off. And that was a, that was a good year as well, because I wanted, like, free holidays. <laughs> gave, gave my mum, like, 500 pounds, like, yeah, that's yours, take it. And I was doing that, like, 18, 19, you know, so. What do you think gave you the patience, though? Because even me, there's times I struggle with patience. Yeah. And you're clearly very patient, very mm-hmm. strong. How, how do you do that? Again, it's just the, the teachings of Islam. The teachings of Islam. When you really learn what the Prophet went through as well. The Prophet went through a lot of hardship. I learned all of this through just reading books, um, watching videos on, online. Seeing all of these things, just maybe, just maybe kind of just want to be like the Prophet. Yo, if the Prophet went through all of this, I can go through not something even more easier than that, yeah. you know? Just firming him. And of course, it's a thing of, I kind of understood that if there's, there's two types, there's two types of, of hardships, yeah. There's the, or pain, should I say. Mm-hmm. There's the pain of regret, or there's the pain of being disciplined, and being patient and grinding for what you want. So you just need to pick your pain. I'd rather not be regretful, thinking, oh, what if I did this? What if I did that? I'd rather stay firm, be disciplined, do my work, and stay patient. Let's go through that pain. So at the end of the tunnel, at the end of the hardship, there's ease. Allah SWT says, verily with hardship comes ease. So I'd rather just go through all of that pain and then there's the ease at the end. And that's the reason, that's how I stay patient. That's my thought process when it comes to going through hardship and just staying firm. And who was educating you on all of this from such a young age? Because you self-educated yourself on half of it, basically. Yeah, just books, um, Watching videos, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I'm a, I'm a bit of a YouTube bang out, so <laughs> I might be watching um quite a few videos, but I never watch videos that are like that won't educate me. I like to watch videos that will give me some sort of value. So yeah, I was just banging out these videos, and I just always gain something. That's why I'm saying your podcast as well. I was banging it out. <laughs> no, I appreciate banging it. Banging it out, man. <laughs> it's, you know what it is. I'll be I'll be dead honest with you, and I never knew much about you. I'll be truthful. I'm not sitting here. I'm not gonna pretend that I knew everything about you, but. I saw you on Ghost's Insta. Ghost he shared something. I can't remember what it was. And it was about two o'clock in the morning. I clicked on your account. And I, you know what it is? You look at you, looked at your account, scrolled through it, and every single thing on there was about Islam. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So I started, I was just having one of my, you know where you just scroll through someone's account and you're reading it. And the thing is as well, all of your posts are educational. It's not, you don't post for the sake of posting. Never. You're not one of them guys who are like, oh, I've got a post today. Let me just get a picture of me in the gym. Boom, up. <laughs> It's mm. always, and you've always got long descriptions or there's words on the screen. It's always something 
yeah. that you learn from. Yeah. And I like posts like that. I like Instagram. It, man. I like captions to me are a big thing. I read all captions. Yeah. I do the picture, not so much, but captions. I'm mm. always involved in captions. Mm-hmm. And I knew nothing about you. I knew nothing. Mm. But I, thought, I want him on my show. <laughs> and it's weird. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Allah put us here so we can meet on it. But yeah. I just thought to myself, like, he must be on his dean properly. And I like the fact that he's... You know what it is? Whenever you see someone who's really on their dean, as weird as it sounds, they've always gone through stuff. And that's what I've learned through just looking at people, working out like no one... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but no one's strongly on their dean and they've had a great life. Mm, it's yeah. always through hardship mm-hmm. that it makes mm-hmm. it makes it stronger. Indeed. And mm. I knew I knew when I was reading it, oh, he was so strong. So I said, he's had something's gone wrong in his life somewhere. I'm not saying it's bad, mm-hmm. but he's had something change in his life or something's happened like the events that you've told us today that has made you who you are today Mm -hmm. no one's born and preaches all day about it they don't Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's why i wanted you on the show because i thought okay there's something wrong here i never knew nothing about you even before i voice noted you i was like bro could you let me a little bit know about your story because Uh, i don't know nothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i could have reached out to ghost he probably knows a lot more than i do i don't know Mm -hmm. i just i just thought let me just message him and see if he wants to come on Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you're here today telling a story and no, I respect it. Thanks for coming on. That's that's no that's worries, what I wanted man. to say to you. No man. No again. Thanks for having me, man. Um, yeah, definitely, man. Like like I said, um, a lot test those that he loves. A lot test his strongest so- soldiers. So, yeah, man, you have to go through it just to get just just to develop. You know, no nobody that you know becomes great has it had it easy. Yeah, you know, 100%. hard times create strong men. So yeah, man, had to had to go through. Unfortunately, it's not easy when you're going through it. You're like, oh, this is long. But once you get to the end of it, you're like, okay, I, I had to go through that for me to become the person I am now. And I feel as though every experience I've had, you know, there's there's been many situations I've I've been in. Even though again, I'm not affiliated with the road life. Just that fact that I'm in that environment, or, and um, I'm associated with certain men that are in that has led to certain consequences that I've gone through. And um, just life in general as well. When you're a boy becoming a man, you have to go through it. There's so many things that you have to go through um, to evolve. And even now, you know, I'm probably still going to go through something. There's something that's definitely going to come away. Exactly, it's all a test. But at the the end of the day, I know that, okay, cool. This test will only make me stronger and it will only make me better, you know. What does the future hold for you? I'm still on my mission. My mission is, again, to show the youth um, that there's more to life than the roads and doing smart whips and cars and all of these things there. Yeah, no, there's a there's a lifestyle on the other side where you can be disciplined, you can be in the gym, getting swole, getting big, building discipline and mental strength there. Your prayers, your deen, Islam. Um, yeah, man, I think that's my calling, that's my mission. I saw a, um, a video from a monk and he said that every man should once they go through the darkness they go through the hard times it's now their job to pull people other people whether they're younger than them or other people within the darkness they need to pull them out of that darkness as well they need to tell them how to get out of the darkness and try to pull them and you know i've gone through certain things now i feel as though it's my time to pull people out of the darkness and to show them that yo there's a better light there's a better way to live and yeah that's that's me that's why i do what i do you know it's big that that's your mission in life because there's whenever i ask other people is i want to start this business or i want to do this or i want to do that and your mission's simple you just want to help other people and that's Mm. that's listen that's that's a in itself that's great there's nothing else the the rewards you get from that from helping other helping other people Mm. nothing beats that Mm -hmm. you could sit here and say i want to you could have turned around to me and said i want to make my fitness brand bigger (laughs) <laughs> do you know what I mean you could yeah. have said anything and we're on a platform where at the end of the day this is advertising you as well and the fact you've turned around and said that's your mission and your mission isn't to I know you've got I watched, I looked on your Insta I know you've got your programs I know all of it but the fact you've chosen to say that that's your mission and not anything business related I respect you even more because you could have sat here and said oh yeah I've got this program. I've watched nah. it. I watched your video instead of spending it 60, 78. I've watched it all. I've seen it. I watched that clip just on the way here. You could have said that. And I respect that you I respect that you didn't. But this is my platform and I do like to help my brothers grow. So what is it you do for a living? <laughs> yeah, um, so I do have a um an app, 
I do have a um a coaching app where I do help people with their fitness goals, um whether it's getting stronger, building skill and calisthenics, um losing weight. Of course, I, I have that. I do plan to have many more things coming out in twenty twenty four as well. So yeah, man, we're just building. We're building. And if people now. want to get in touch, where's the best people place to get, get in touch? touch? Instagram big dot isa. You can get in touch. Uh, send me a DM. I try to get through all my DMs. Um, if a brother needs help, I try to get. In, you know, I try to reply. But yeah, mainly that. Um, I'm on TikTok as well. YouTube. I do a bit of YouTube as well. But Instagram is my main platform. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on. I like to end all my episodes. I want you to give a message to the younger generation. I know the whole podcast has been a message to the youth. <laughs> yeah. But a bit of advice for the younger generation. The younger generation, you don't have to do the roads. You don't have to do the smart whips. It's not cool. It doesn't make you look cool. What makes you look cool is trying to become a better person for Allah, for your family. It's trying to build wealth or build a business for your family and for yourself looking after your health looking after you know your fitness staying on the path of god your prayers that's cool not doing smart whips in cars and trying to force the roadman life like that's not cool stay firm well, listen my brother it's been a pleasure having you on the show guys Thanks, make sure you like comment and subscribe and go follow him up on insta as you can tell he's a very motivational man we'll see you on the next one